What's up, guys? It's your girl, Matt Cox with MA Couture Crafting, and I want to talk about my Lion King quilt. So, yes, I'm doing a series of Thomas Kincaid quilts that have kind of a Disney bound vibe around the edges, around the sides. This quilt, for whatever reason, kicked my butt, but it's probably the most striking that I've done. It's probably the most different in regards to the way that it looks. Um, I love the mix of African fabrics and the way that it does seem to gradiate, even though they are very strong prints. So I've got African prints, I've got animal prints, and I've got solids, and I seem to be able to get, still get the movement. And my newest way of binding these is instead of doing an actual binding, I'm facing them. And if you'd like to see how that comes together, keep watching. Um, Facing around quilt. I have a whole video on that. And yeah, let's let's go on ahead and check out The Lion King. I think The Lion King is such an important story. I think it's one of the coolest stories. And it was around that age of Disney that I think was just the best age. Um, so let's keep watching and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye bye. Simba and Nala became the 
his forehead. Yet he was totally and completely on Okay guys, so I'm at one of my favorite places and the only place that I buy African fabric, which is here at Quilts In With Soul. So what I should have done was pulled my solids first, but I didn't. And because this is the first time that I'm trying to see if this I can pull this off with like heavy prints. And I'm not sure that I can. But since I didn't, I'm gonna just grab what I can grab and see how this works out I think I'm gonna do like nine I think I'm gonna grab like nine African prints maybe I'll grab no I will probably grab five African prints we'll see let's just see what happens but these are some of the African prints that she has right now this is just the easily the best selection of African fabrics that anybody has and they are so affordable it's ridiculous how affordable these are so I'm gonna try to grab a couple. I've grabbed two already. I've grabbed these two. And I'm just gonna keep working with it and see what happens. Something else I wanted to show you guys is kind of how I'm pulling these. This has got multiple colors in it. Excuse my nails, guys, they need to be done. But anyway, this has multiple colors in it, and but it's tight and it pretty much reads all over as that gold. This kind of reads all over with the dark. If I were to grab a print, this is super light. Um, even though it has some black in it, so I've got to be careful how I cut these strips Because I could just get or how I choose my fabric because I could mess around and just get the black and that will mess up the gradient So I'm trying to get fabric that reads all over as um, One color or kind of around that one color. Hope that makes sense All right, so this time we are doing a very different Bargello quilt of course, I did a pull, and I did a pull of, I think I did 18 fabrics, which is which is what we did last time for Fantasmic, but this pull just hits a little different. It is a mixture of solids, African fabrics, and animal print fabrics, and I cannot be more excited to see how this gradiates, because depending upon where I hit this, it's going to look, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. It feels like a good idea. I love the, the pull. I mean, I just, I'm obsessed with how I did this pull and we're going to see how it travels. We're going to do a few modifications on the way that I've been doing the Bargello panel style quilt, but I think this might be my best one yet. I just think these fabrics are going to do something special. So two and three eighth strips. I'm gonna do eight strips for each color, and then I'm gonna get to sewing like the Dickens. And um, this quilt should take me probably about a week to finish. So really quickly, all the strips have been sewn together into one big sheet. Now I'm just gonna fold it in half and sew down and close this up and then cut it into little bite sizes that are seven and a half inches. So see, it's night one big nice tube. It's a tube and now I'm just gonna turn it this way and start cutting using the ruler that I adore. 
Oh, I love this ruler. And it doesn't have to be super duper exact, but it needs to be close. And so we're going to do seven and a half all the way down until I get five of these. You want to get five from each. So now we are going to take these and we're going to make two identical ones. And we're going to use our clover seam ripper because it's one of the best. So we're going to take these and make two identical ones. And we need, oh, let's see, to just open this up. I know we do all that sewing just to open up, but I just grab a couple stitches. And when I open it, we stick this down in there. And we just pull it out. And here is our first strip. Strip number one. And again, we need to make an identical one. And we're going to do one more. Again, we're shooting for identical, two identical. Um, there are 36 here, so we need 18 different sets. And we used 18 different fabrics. We are going to do two sets. You want to do, I shouldn't say two sets, you want to do um, 18, you want to do 18 different sets. And we used 18 different fabrics, which is just lovely. And so we're going to do two of these. And this is where it gets fun. Now we're going to start the gradation. So now I need the zebra at the top and the white at the bottom. So here we can see that we have white and zebra. Now I want the zebra at the top. And we're just going to work our way through the colors. So I'm going to open, I opened here between the black and the white. Now I'm going to open between the zebra and the white. So I'm just going to open it because these seams are pressed open. They open kind of nice and easy. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but the white is at the top. Now the zebra's at the top. Now I want this color at the top. And I'm just going to keep opening up seams until I get where I need through all 36 of these. Okay, so they have all been taken apart and they are barjelloed out. And now I just need to cut them into wedge shapes. Okay, so now I have this on. And I have decided to line up the 34 on this line here. The 15 is going to be right here. And then this between the five and the six, the five and a half is going to go right here. And those are going to be my lineup points for all of them. So I'm going to start cutting wedges one at a time. So I have them partially laid out. You can see the ombre or the Bargello effects happening. I'm going to go on ahead and finish the circle and then we'll start sewing them together. So after cutting all the wedges, I have sewn them together two by two. And this is what I have, which is just interesting, right? So now I'm going to really crop out the panel because the panel is so big. Look, whoever did this Thomas Kincaid panel did not do it properly. They should have shrunk this by like 3,000 and made sure to get the original panel picture, which has all the animals down here, which makes me sad. So I'm going to crop this out a lot. You'll probably only see like that much of this panel when I'm finished. I'm going to crop out that side there, so that'll probably be as much as you'll see. I'm going to make this one of the smaller ones that I do, just so that you can see more of all these prints. So this is what the panel looks like before I cut it. I'm going to crop the heck out of this panel because there's just nothing going on and I want to show more of the Bargello. Let's do it. 
so I am getting ready to just straighten this guy up if you can see look at this this is just all kinds of jagged and whatnot so I'm just gonna pull it up over my mat and I'm not gonna take off a bunch here I mean I can take off a little bit but I really want to keep this area of the pride rock together and I'm gonna need to get my 36 inch ruler which I love that I own that ruler that's definitely one that gets quite a bit of play for me in my quilting style and I'm just looking to see kind of I'm gonna jump in here I don't know if you guys can see it but at two and a half inches so I'm just gonna pull it over and be sure that I'm getting a little bit I definitely need at least a quarter inch to the right of him preferably like two inches so I should be fine so instead of doing two and a half inches I decided to jump all the way to three and that leaves me about two and a half inches from, from uh, Simba's kid I forget his name and um, gives me some space right here or actually that's Simba I'm tripping no that could be Simba no that's Nala nah where's that Narabi okay whatever um, I'm getting ready to cut this straight right here okay now we have a clean edge here and once you have a clean edge the world is at your fingertips because now you can square up however you see fit Kion that's his name well if that's that just doesn't look like Mufasa that looks more like Simba to me but again who knows I don't I am going to cut I'm going to take off so much his butt. I don't need his butt. Like, why do I need that? I don't need his butt. I don't. I'm going to take off so much, guys. You guys are going to be like, what? Yeah, I'm taking off all that. All of it. And don't freak out. Um, by the way that I'm doing this, I'm just going to fold it over. And I'm taking off all that. I don't need it. What am I going to do with that tree? I really wish they had kept the full picture. I'm going to insert the full picture so you guys can see what the actual Thomas Kincaid panel really looks like because it is uh, the true Thomas Kincaid painting because it is gorgeous and this just does not do it justice but this is the focal point I can I can get down with that that's fine moving on from that now I'm gonna cut off all of that okay so now all of his backside is gone now this is still not perfectly square and you'll see I actually square it up with a square ruler at the end. This is just kind of getting me in the ballpark of how I'm going to trim. See that's not square and I know it's not. <clears throat> Ooh, this is much smaller than I thought. <laughs> oh, it's funny because I did it. Alright now I'm going to go look at this on the quilt and see how much I want to take off top to bottom. I Well actually I know I can only take off I really shouldn't take off much of anything up here um, with little Simba, Keon, Kenyon, or whomever's head right here. I really should only be taking off about maybe an inch and a half off the top because of where his little head is. But the bottom, I'm free to get loose. I could take off. <laughs> I could take off about seven, eight inches here and not feel any kind of way about it. I can take off seven inches here and I feel good about taking off seven inches that's gonna leave me his paw it might leave me some of this back foot here and then yeah isn't it weird to be in a creative's head because you're totally in my head with me right now yep we're gonna take off about yeah I could take off literally seven inches and feel real good about the bottom there and that is precisely what I'm going to do Okay, so I took off roughly six and a half, and I haven't looked at it on the quilt. I'm just going with how I feel. I'm just creating. I'm okay with whatever is happening. As long as I don't cut off little Simba or Kion, we're good. Boy, this is much smaller than any panel that I've ever inset before. Okay, now I'm going to fold this into quarters. I'm going to fold it in half, and I'm going to fold it in half again. And then I'm going to actually truly square it up with a square ruler after looking at it a little bit. And I know that I have enough space on the top 
to cut off, you know, however much I need to cut off, and at the bottom. The top, I left myself plenty of room here. To the left, it doesn't matter. To the bottom, it doesn't matter. To the right, it matters. But I will fold this in half and just straighten it up. Let's see how this is gonna look. Looks really good in regards to the size of it. Um, I'm just gonna rotate it and figure out I think I want the white part to be coming out from over Simba's head. Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to start twisting and turning this guy because it's a circle and see how big. Actually, first I'm going to trim this down and get it squared up and figure out how big of a hole it really is going to be. Let's do that now. Okay. Now to truly square it up. It looks pretty good to me. I'm going to fold it in quarters. Actually, I'm going to flip it over so that I can make sure that I'm looking at something. Let's fold it in quarters and see what we get. Look at all that. That's not squared up. I'm going to try to meet the ends the best I can. There are other ways to do this if you have more space, but I'm working with very limited space. So you kind of get what you get and you do not throw a fit. Something is in there. Some thread, of course. All right, so I'm just gonna do that and then I'm gonna fold it again in half. And see what we get. And we're gonna try to get it to the nearest whole number. And I know that I've got space everywhere. I'm just going to feel around and feel around and I'm going to take two cuts. It's going to be one up the side and one off the top. And I'm trying to make sure that I catch the least amount of fabrics, which is going to be this purple color right here. That's going to be an overage. And we are going to square this guy up. And there's the least amount right there. So we're going to take all of that. Of course, I always have some fussy cutting tape on here. I don't know why I always don't take that off. So it looks like I can get 14. No, it does not. It looks like I can get 13 and a half. Let me take this off. Okay, so the amount that it looks like I can get is going to be 14 and a half by 14 and a half. And that will square this bad boy up. And that's getting everything here and it's getting everything on top and I know that I've got less than an inch everywhere and I know that I have more than an inch to play with in all the places that matter let's do it for actually wrong this is 13 and a half by 14 and a half that would have been so bad if I was really working with those measurements Hmm. 13 and a half by 14 and a half. Boy. When I cut the hole, I would have cut the hole wrong and been all confused. 13 and a half by 14 and a half. Just gonna move this guy a little bit. Fidgeting with it. Micro movements, which is a lot easier to do with the creative grids than a quilter select, which you guys know that I love with a passion but you're not going to be doing too many micro adjustments with that because it's serious business and it doesn't move. All right, we're squared up. We're good. All right, so this guy is officially cut. Don't you love how just from folding it, we've got this super hard crease in there, I tell you. Um, now it measures, it should be about 29 by 27, because we did 13 and a half and 14 and a half, and that's what she got, nice. So now I need to cut the whole 29 and a half by 27 and a half. Cutting the hole is always the funky part. Let's do it. 
So I have folded my quilt into quarters and I cut a hole. And I like that method because it was a nice easy hole to cut, no worries. However, when you fold something over in quarters, I needed the panel to be one inch larger than the hole. When it's folded over this way, this is actually two inches, so everything was doubled. So I can either take this larger, take the hole a quarter inch larger, or just go on ahead and cut the panel down a quarter of an inch. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I know that's what I'm going to do. And then right here, I've drawn a little quarter inch mark. I'm going to take my scissors and cut right to that angle. And then we should be cooking with gas. We should be ready to insert this puppy. Now this one might be one of the coolest ones I have done yet. This is gorgeous. I'm going to actually let her quilt all the way through this one instead of leaving the center open and rhinestoning it. I'm just going to let this one be great. Thank <laughs> you. 